there are times when you're staring into that dark abyss and you go, I'm going to take the leap. Sure, out of film school, I thought that they were going to hand us, you know, our diploma and our three picture deal, which is the joke, where you just be like, of course I'll be working. When the writing gets difficult, which it does, it's the easiest time to run away from it. And I found that even when you sit with it, like I think Raymond Chandler said, he sat at his desk every day at the same time. If, he, if anything happened or it didn't, you know, it's that constant repetition, which writing is. It's not, oh, I'm, you know, uh, waiting for my muse. Oh, how amazing it is to be a writer. You're like, it is, but as a writer, take the Hollywood element out. It's, it's you know, it's a grind. You got to write, you know, you got to come up with stuff. All, 35 scripts, I think about it, I go, how did I channel that many stories through this body into these things? I mean, then I go, there won't be any others in the well. How could there be? Well, that's your job as a writer, right? To come up with another story, to come up with another, you know, I mean, that's the beautiful part about going back to the well and having it be full of stuff. And that's where your living comes into play, your experiences and um, living in an authentic life where you're always like observing and doing things because it's your homework as a screenwriter to do that because you don't want to go back to your well and have it be empty. A lot of people don't enjoy their day job. I mean, it's, it's okay, but they're working for the weekend or they're working for something else. And I always saw my father not enjoy his job. And I said, I want to, I want to do something that I want to get paid to do. And I may not make millions of dollars, but to wake up and, and sit down and write and create for a living, I still kind of get a you know, kick out of it. I'm like, oh my gosh, I get, I, you know, I'm living my childhood dream. You know, it's 11 year old kid making films to be able to you know, see the, my name on a larger small screen and be on the set and see actors say the lines or work, you know, do rewrites on the set and you know, interact with other creative people, then you're, you know, it's just, it was a dream. It has to start with you. You have to care about what you're writing, you know, first and foremost. And, and that'll show through if you're, if you're inauthentic, where you're trying to just, you know, cheat and write something for money or write something that's, uh, you're trying to follow a trend and copy something else, you know, it'll show through and it, it won't be like, that's why I think uh, my spec sold because it was a heartfelt and, it, you know, I think I poured it out on the page. You know, because um, I, I don't, I don't say this in the book, but I, um, during the time of starting the spec, I had lost a family member, and so I stopped writing the, the script, and I came back. It took me like six or eight months to finally feel, you know, not guilty about working on that, and I think a lot of that loss went into the the characters. You know what I mean? It was like, and so many times your own life experiences, uh, which I think should reflect in your work and make it that authentic, you know. If you don't believe in yourself, why, why do you expect other people to believe in you? And it's your dream. Um, someone else will live their dream and why shouldn't you live your dream? That was always my opinion. And it's scary because you don't know if you're going to, or they will allow you to do it. Um, so you have to write something that you care about, but also that somebody else sees, you know, that care in there and, and wants to make it. Then, then the business part becomes they want to invest millions of dollars in your idea as opposed to somebody else's idea. Faith in yourself, first and foremost. Don't search outward for it. You know, like looking, looking for uh, validation from outside to get that, you know, like, oh, I'll write something and if somebody, an agent likes it, then that validates me, you know. Know, know and have faith in your abilities first and foremost, and then go out there and see what happens. I say there's no fame and fortune in the screenwriting game. I mean, you know, it's, it's uh, when you have most, uh, half of the writers in the Writers Guild don't, don't work every year, and those are professional WGA writers. I think the odds last year were like 5,200 or something out of approximately 10,000. So the other half are looking for jobs and not working, you know, or the 50,000 scripts that are apparently 
registered with the guild every year, um, those are just the ones registered or the 70 to 100 specs a year that sell. You know, I always tell writers, I don't bring up those odds to scare you, but for you to realize what you're up against. You know, you wouldn't go climb Mount Everest without the training and the help and the tools. You just go, okay, I'm going to go do it. Now, there's a certain uh, courage in doing that, but there's also a certain stupidity at some time, you know. And I always say to uh, aspiring screenwriters, treat it like your job because it will be. You don't have the luxury of when you write your specs to go, uh, I'm going to go off today. Work on it for five minutes, ten minutes, whatever it is. But that constant is what's going to happen when you get the assignment jobs. And, you know, you don't want to be shocked when suddenly you get this opportunity, you're hired to write a movie and you can't physically sit there for eight hours a day or you can't write it in 30 days or you can't write it in eight weeks or however much time you've agreed to write the screenplay. You will be shocked because you're not training. As you know, you know, it's, it's a step deal. So whenever anything sells, you know, it, it's in steps and you may not get the final steps. So when a screenplay sells, you get a little bit of money and then a little bit of money for the next draft, and, next, and that has to be made for you to get the bonus. So everyone thinks that just because a script sells, suddenly you're, you know, everybody's calling on the phone and things like that. So I would say that was not difficult to revisit, but you know, I think about the time, I put myself back into the time. That's what I always try to do when I was writing, because I'm a very visual person and I can really have the sense of memory and at back of the time, it wasn't uh, funny. <laughs> you know, it was very, uh, it was like, oh my gosh, so now I've, I've done this and still I have to do this? And you're like, yeah, many times you have to live in these two, these two parallel worlds and that can mess with your head a lot. So you have to be really grounded and say, this is the reality of it. And it doesn't, um, it, it doesn't uh, it's not the image of who I am. I am a writer if I'm catering or always doing anything else at the time, you know. Look, I say how I was fired from my first professional job. At Christmas, right? At Christmas time, you know. Um, but it happens, and then you, you're not guaranteed anything. You know, the hardest thing that I had to learn when I first started getting paid to write was that I thought everything I wrote would get made. Of course it would be. Well, I have probably five projects sitting on a shelf that are production ready. I was paid for all the drafts and nothing myriad of reasons because the marketplace changes, economics, uh, their buyers decided to go with a different genre, the actor bowed out and they want, you know, financing fell through, all things that were not my problem. You know, I'm just the writer, right? But that was the hardest thing. Uh, but I've, I mean, it's not hard anymore. I realized the, the realities of the business that not, you know, and, but that was the hardest thing. I thought everything I wrote would be made. I thought that when I wrote my specs, of course, obviously, too. Every spec you write is going to sell, right? It's hard. Rejection, criticism. If you put yourself out there, you're going to be criticized. And many people don't finish things, I find, because if they never finish it, they'll never know that it sucks. And they'll never be criticized because they're still working on it. You know, it's a work in progress for a number of years. You're like, didn't you finish that? Mm, I'm still working on it. That's a safe place to be. Then putting it out there and getting smacked around and that's only that's that's how you learn that's the only way you're going to learn one time i was in a meeting with a producer and i had never worked with him before and i was working on assignment and he said something off the cuff which was kind of insulting like um could you explain it to him it's like screenwriting 101 and i look i was like and it almost i it went over my head and i thought oh my gosh he just insulted me and i let it go but i was like who are you talking i you know I get it, but you don't get it. I don't know how you work. You're all <laughs> over the place. I'm trying to grasp a thing which changes to another thing, and I'm like, ah, but you can't be, right. you can't say that. You know, you can, it's a fine line. You got to know how to, how to uh, you know, apply yourself when you need to and, and not, just like, like with uh, fighting your battles with notes, you know. I had a friend in film school, and he would, he would self-sabotage because he never wanted to, uh, he was a rule, rule breaker. I'm going to break all the rules. And so he'd write these scripts that were like double the size of a script and the wrong cover, you know, all these things right up front and they would just put them in the trash. And he is extremely knowledgeable about film. I mean, like crazy, but it didn't translate into the realities of the business. And so he's like, oh, I said, well, you can break the rules once you know them 
and you're in, but you're trying to be this maverick and nobody cares, you know? And he really hard head, you know, just wouldn't listen. And uh, that I think was self-sabotaging, you know, it, you know, I mean, it's still, I don't know to this day if he listens, but I'm not sure. It was the time when uh, I sold my spec and I was in the trade papers, you know, Variety. And every writer wants to be in Variety, right? Then you say, oh, I made it, right? Well, the day that I was in Variety, the headline was this new company had formed and they, they optioned my script and they were going to buy it and make it into their first movie. And that day in Variety, I had to do a catering job at one of the biggest producers uh, in Hollywood's house. And so it was this catering company and my friend and I drove up to Beverly Hills and here we we're at this giant mansion of this producer. And uh, it was a big breakfast meeting with um, big power, you know, power players, uh, former prime minister of a Middle Eastern country, you know, security everywhere. And I was thinking, wow, you know, I'm in variety today. Why should I be catering, you know? And also I was thinking in a way, which is in the book, um, what if this producer had, had, you know, rejected my screenplay? And here I am in his house serving him coffee, you know, so just be careful about who you, um, you know, disrespect, uh, you know, on the way up or down because, you know, the, you just might end up in, your, in their house pouring coffee for them, you know. The important thing too is to have people around you that support your endeavor because I've lost friendships and I've lost relationships with people who said, well, and they drew a line in the sand and they said, and I was like, that's not a good thing to do. And what about the last X number of years I've been doing this? You're just going to throw, have me throw that away. You know, the, the, the lack of understanding about how much um, filmmaking and writing was such a part of my being almost that other creative endeavors like drawing and things like that. But, but this is like who I am. And to have someone with you not understand that, it's really, you know, and that's the hardest part that so many elements, just like in making a film, so many elements have to go together and all click. The same way with forging a career. When I was working uh, at the law firm for two years, at lunch, I would write. I would write by hand, but I wanted to like, not just sit there and be like, uh, you know. I w so every day at lunch, that was an hour, that's five hours a week including the time at night, then at six o'clock make dinner and then write until midnight and then go to bed, 7 a.m., go to that job. It was having two jobs at once. And then on the weekends, people would say, oh, come on, do this and that. And I said, well, I have to write. Write? What are you talking about? I said, well, and it was, it was terribly exhausting. And I can see how it can chip away, you know, at, at, at you, especially if you have a family and a lot of different concerns pulling at you. Um, that's why you have to really close the door and say, this is my time. Um, and it, had, it cannot be interrupted. And that's, it is hard to do, but you really have to stay disciplined. And, and also I think you have to have the fire and burning passion to really want it more than anything else. Day one of Pages is like starting a new job, except it's at my office. You know, it's the same familiar surroundings, but it's starting a new job. And luckily there wasn't a great amount of time between me finishing the treatment and, and the company saying go because I like it when it's fresh still that I can jump right on rather than this, you know, there's a momentum that's really important about things like that. For me, I have to see the film in my head before I can write it. And I know that I, I'm, I'm, I have a lot of problems ahead of me if I can't see it. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't lock in like I've almost seen the movie. Like, like when you watch a movie, you remember it. I have to see it that way. And... I know things are working when I start to live. And you know, the outline's good for living with your characters. You know, you get to live with them. You get to, you get to f see how the movie is working or it doesn't work before you sit down and write that screenplay, which is building the house. You know, that's almost like the pre-blueprint. And in, in my opinion, that's been my experience. But I know a lot of writers just want to write down a couple of lines and, and wing it. And there's so many, so many things that can go wrong. And why, why not turn in your the most amazing first draft you can. I don't see the, the problem with that. You have to have uh, ideas that you have to have log lines that you're working on. Then you also have to have some treatments or one sheets, which are a lot easier to do than write a complete screenplay. And then you also have to have your screenplay that you're working on. But constantly, when you go into a meeting with your spec that gets you the meeting, um, they're not buying that spec. They just want to meet you. Say, oh, I can see your ability. And then they say, what else you have? 
and you don't want that to be, well, I'm working on something and it's going to take me six months. I'm not going to see you for six months or you're not going to be on my radar for six months. You want to say, I have this other thing. You don't want to bring, you know, a suitcase full of scripts, but you want to say, I have this other thing. Oh, well, after the meeting, send it over. Bam. You know what I mean? You, you have to have multiple projects in the marketplace, I think, at all times because not all of them and maybe not one of them, but the, the, that's what you're up against. That's why I say when writers are doing their spec, set your own self-imposed deadline. Don't let it be open-ended where, you know, oh yeah, I was working on this last year and uh, Christmas came, but, you know, because you're going to need that training, you know, and even while you're working in it with experience, it's still difficult. You got to stand because you're your own boss. No one's, no one's calling me saying, are you working today? And the day goes on and then, you know, I, I mean, you got to really stay on it and, and realize, um, there's a lot of self work. I mean, it's like you're your own boss and it's good in one way. People say, oh, I would love to do that. But with that comes a lot of responsibility. I didn't sit down to write a book initially. I was blogging and I wanted to get my past 20 years of professional experience somehow out of my, you know, mind and, and heart and try to be able to share it with people. And so after five or six years of blogging, I realized that I had enough information to you know, create something. And so I started the process of uh, stripping down the articles and refabricating them into, you know, into chapters. And, and then I thought, well, I'm going to chart my journey from how I started uh, in the business as a filmmaker at 11 years old. You know, what, what was that spark, that creative spark, and chart it all the way until today. And not so much as a memoir, but also using examples and funny anecdotal stories, but you know, disciplines that I've used that have helped me, you know, stay in the game that hopefully other, other writers will be able to see and go, oh yeah, I'm not doing that or I need to do that. As I say, it's hard. I'm living proof that it, it does happen and there's no guarantees, but I always say the only guarantee in screenwriting is that if you stop writing, you're definitely guaranteed never to have any chance at success. So as long as you're in the game, you have a shot. And then you realize the day's gone and you're like, I should be on page 15 and I'm on three.